Hello everyone, Vegas Vic 1965. I'm here with uh, Noah. Hey Noah, what's going on, buddy? Hi. What's this week's video about? About mob lighting. I mean, mob spawning and, and lighting. You're right. We're going to go over some uh, light levels, uh, and we're also going to do some uh, uh, a little information about mob spawning. Mainly, this week's video is to help our hardcore players. I play a lot of hardcore. And uh, unfortunately, on one of the servers I play on, AdStar, uh, we have a lot of deaths, and I feel so bad for those guys. So I figured I want to put this video out, try and help them make it through their hardcore worlds a lot easier. So these light levels will help everyone, including in survival, even though you can respawn. But in hardcore, you can't. If you know about hardcore, it's one life, one chance. So Noah, without further ado, let's find out. Vegas 1965 I'm here with Noah. Uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk about, mainly this video is about light levels, but uh, I noticed that uh, with that there are also uh, hostile mob spawns are uh, direct reflected the light level as well. So I wanted to go over some of those as well, but it's prim primarily for light levels in the game to help protect yourself and keep things like creepers from spawning uh, and coming up right behind you. So hostile mob spawn in light level of seven or less. There is one exception and that is the pillager. And when I say that, one exception, for example, a pillager outpost, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen pillager outposts. Well, beneath the pillager outpost, up to 20 blocks below, these guys can spawn if there are caves down there. And to increase your spawn rates, if you're gonna use that pillager outpost, then you want them to spawn at ground level. And they spawn 35 blocks from the structure itself in all directions, east, west, north, and south. I mean, yes, east, west, north, and south. And anything below that 20 blocks, if there are cave systems, like I said, they'll spawn down there. Now, you can throw light uh, torches down there, but that's not going to affect their spawn rates. They're going to still spawn down there. So the suggestion is, if you plan on you making use of a pillager outpost, try to get as much water into those areas down below, uh, below that pillager outpost as possible in those caves to keep the spawns from happening. But most of, like I said, most of the hostile mobs are going to spawn in light level seven or less. So for light levels, let's go take a look and see what we need to do to light things up. Now, the first one, of course, is a beacon. Right, Noah? Yep. And that, that produces a light level 15. This is fire, light level 15. Lava or flowing lava, 15. Light level for a glowstone is 15, jack-o'-lantern 15. This is a redstone lamp. I see you put, the tor put it on the back, awesome. No, I didn't. Put it under there. Underneath? Because <laughs> normally you'd need like a switch, a button, or some redstone device to turn that on. Light level 15, you have a sea lantern, that's light level 15. And this is one of our new blocks, and that's the, yeah, that's the shroom, shroom light. light. That's right. Well, level, For, I should have mentioned, 15. this is going to include 1.16. The shroom lights can be found in the new Nether update for 1.16, which uh, 1.16 is all about. So again, light level 15 for these shroom lights. Uh, conduit's going to produce a light of level 15. I just like the sound effect, sorry. I was wondering what that was. <laughs> okay, then you have your regular lantern that it just recently came out, light level 15. Now this one is going to be uh, making use of the, uh, the new nether, uh, nether lighting that we have. But it is, let me bring that one up for you, is a soul lantern and that produces only a light level of 10. Now a campfire it has a light level of 15 when lit, a soul campfire level 10 when lit. Uh, uh, this of course is an end rod, rod, right, level, level 14. 14. What's the next one, Noah? A torch level 14. Next one? Uh, soul bind it, a torch, I think. Yes, yeah, soul torch, uh, that's light level 10. And then you have these here. Noah just put some iron in to get it cooking because they, in order to produce this light, these light levels, it must be cooking. Go ahead, Noah, tell me what they are. They are, this is a smoker, light level 13, one cooking. <laughs> and this is, I think, a blast furnace, light level when cooking 13. And then this one is 13. This is a smoker whenever it's Right, cooked. so that's the furnace. The uh, blast one, furnace and the smoker. But only the smoker cooks food. It doesn't cook ore or smelt ore right. and only does food. Next up is a new 1.16 block. It's found in the nether called Cryan, Crying Obsidian, light level 10. Then you have Soul Fire that can be found in Soul, Soul, Fire, Soul Sand Valleys. 
uh, that'll produce a light level of 10. And of course, if, in case you don't know, these, these will burn you a lot faster, so be very careful as opposed to a regular fire. Let's move around to the next one. Uh, when touched, these guys produce a uh, light level of 9, or when you place an object near or on them, that's a uh, redstone ore. An ender chest produces a light level 7, a redstone torch light level 7, magma block light level 3, a brewing stand light level 1, and yes, unbelievable as it may seem, a mushroom will produce a light level 1, a dragon egg light level 1, and an end, end frame will produce a light level 1. The respawn anchor has three or four light levels. Uh, one where one glowstone block's been placed at light level three. If there's two glowstone blocks placed in it, light level seven. If there are three glowstone blocks placed in it, light level 11. And if there are four fully charged, it has a light level of 15. Just make sure that you do not set these or try to set your respawn point uh, in anywhere else but the nether. They will explode. So be reminded of that. There is yet another source of light, and that is the sea cucumbers. Now, as a sea cucumber in a light level of just, just one sea cucumber, you're going to get a light level of six, with two of them a light level nine, with three a light level 12, and with all four on one block, you'll get a light level of 15. Think, now, go ahead. I think this is a good price of you if you wanted to direct it, but that's cool. Sure, yeah, you can see actually the light much better down here. Now remember, if you set a sea pickle down, that, uh, let me give you an example. Setting a sea pickle down, like such, if you try to bone meal that, it's not going to work. But if you set a sea, sea pickle on a coral block and you bone meal it, you will get more. Okay, the next part, mainly for the light levels, what I wanted to show. Noah is gonna uh, be our little demonstration here. I'm gonna have him place down a torch once I change the time. Noah, go ahead and set down a torch for me. There you go. This looks so cool, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna bring up the GUI, and for Java version, you press F3. And if you notice here, you're gonna see the sky and the block levels about midway, and I'll, I'll bring that out for you. The client light and server light, you can see as you get closer, the block level that we have here is 14. As we move further away, those light levels are going to decrease. And once we get to seven, that's an area where a mob, can, a hostile mob can spawn. So if you're setting up your light levels in your base, like in hardcore or survival, just make sure that you, when you set your torches out, torches out, I'll go ahead, you might want to set them at least like, you can set them three blocks apart, but you can work four or five blocks apart, and we'll go through and show you those light levels. So standing right on top of that torch, light level 14, as we mentioned earlier, they produce a light level of 14. Going away, it's going to decrease by one light level each time. So we want to make sure this, that our next torch is not set, and then we're back to 14. This means we're good in this area right here, that no hostile mobs can spawn in there. And the same thing goes this way. So you may want to set yourself a pattern if you can, there's three and four. One, two, three, and four. Actually, I think that's five or six. But if you notice in this area here, all these light block areas, nine, 10, as you can see, you are safe from hostile mob spawns from there. But if you've got an area like over here where there's a torch, and then somewhere over in here, you're wondering, hey, I got a, a creeper that spawned. Well, if you notice, the light level is Five. That means you're leaving yourself open, especially in hardcore, for some really bad things to happen and that can totally ruin things. Okay, now getting on to uh, mob spawning themselves. Uh, we had a player the other day that uh, wondered why a mob spawned on a half slab. Well, that's because there is a difference between half, the half slabs. There's a, a top half slab and a bottom half slab. If you set a top half slab, then the game, is going to, the game and the hostile mobs will consider that a full block and be able to spawn on it. So remember that when you're uh, trying to spawn proof your area. Bottom half slabs are the way to go if you would like to set something to where you wanted a dark room but you did not want mobs to spawn and here's an illustration of that. Mob spawning no for bottom half slabs and mob spawning yes for top half slabs. Now there are over 150 blocks that mobs cannot spawn on. There are videos out there, feel free to browse the uh, browse YouTube for those. There's way too many 
that uh, for me to mention here, but the most common ones you can see here would be like carpet in your room, uh, a dark room. You put carpet down, that'll keep that spawns from happening. They don't, hostile mobs don't spawn on stairs, glass, trap doors, or beds. Those are just a few to name. Now over here, now well, let's go over here to the spawner itself. The next uh, mob spawner we're gonna talk about was a uh, mob spawner. If you're curious about how far or how close uh, a spawner will be active for you, it's going to be when you are within within 16 blocks. On the 15th block, that spawner will be active. And Noah's gonna demonstrate by standing on the white one first, as you can see. Oops, stay on the white one there, buddy. Whoop, back up a little bit. There you go. If you notice, that spawner stopped. Now, when, as soon as Noah, that's that's 16 blocks away. Each each yellow represents four, and then the fifth one you'll see is represented by the black. So you got the first one. The first block is five blocks away. Second block is 10 blocks away, and the blue block, which starts at is 15 blocks away. And if Noah moves forward one block, go ahead, buddy. You see that spawner is now active. So you can make use of that you uh, for your spawners. A bit closer. Me? Yeah. It's kind of far away. Oh, I don't want to go closer. I want I wanted to use you for the illustration on how it works. Okay, so the next part we want to look at is going to be what about spawns that happen uh, either at night or from you. And the important thing to remember here is if you happen to spawn into an area, no hostile mob is going to spawn within 24 blocks of you. And I have that. Here we are. Hostile mobs do not spawn within 24 blocks of a player. Now, from 32 to 128 blocks, those hostile mobs will randomly despawn, approximately be every, about every 40 seconds. So if you're making a mob spawner, for example, uh, let's say in Skyblock or even in Survival, then if your, your, your best place to probably set that would be like the spawning platform at uh, 25 blocks, or it's within so 24 blocks up to like 31 blocks or even 30 blocks somewhere right around your spawning platform if you're below that your spawner is going to be active and those mobs won't disappear now hostile mobs will spawn despawn instantly if you are 128 blocks away so just remember some of those things to help you with your minecraft world Getting to uh, the nighttime spawn rates, we're looking at, this is the 24th block away at this point right here. So if we're gonna change the time to nighttime, and this also goes back to the half slab, the bottom half slab, not a top half slab. You'll see the difference here. And I'm gonna back up here. Noah, you wanna come over? Yep. I'll back up over here. I'll have Noah stand right there, and we should not get any spawns within 24 blocks of him. If the, if the game is still running correctly. So let's change the time and find out about our mob spawns. I'm behind Noah, so anything in front of him should spawn and we're gonna try and speed up to show you exactly what happens. Okay, Noah, did we miss anything, do you think, with the light levels and mob spawns? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I hope so either. I hope we covered all the, all the bases for everyone out there that may need a little bit of help or understanding as to why certain things happen. Uh, hopefully we covered all the bases. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave us some comments below. I always, always answer. Noah and I uh, make videos every Wednesday. Usually have them edited and out by early, early Thursday morning U.S. Pacific time. So if you like the video, click the like button. If you would like to subscribe, click the subscribe button. Noah and I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this hopefully short video on light levels and mob spawning to help you with your Minecraft world and all those different survival, hardcore, all of them. So stay alive if you're in hardcore and keep those light levels up. Right, Noah? Yep. Until next week's video, guys, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you then. Goodbye. Bye.